Hey, I'm Amy Spencer with Outreach and Communications, and I'm here today with... Mike Hansborough with USDA NRCS. You know, Mike, we're out here on a very unique and successful very. habitat restoration that has brought back wild quail onto a farm. Now, we're looking at 500 acres out here that has approximately 80, 82 yeah. acres in management. CRP. Okay. Uh, on the USDA program. And this wasn't done just by any one person. This was done by partnerships. Tell me about that. Yeah, and the partnerships really uh, within USDA, it's really important to have the state, TWA, USDA, and Quail Forever partnership because uh, we just don't have enough boots on the ground and we need some technical folks to really help get field borders like behind us on the ground. It's not just go out there and put some wildlife habitat on the ground. We need really good wildlife habitat on the ground. We need to know the difference of, it's not going down to the farm supply store, just buying something and throwing it out there and leaving. So the partnership allows us to do that. Now in this farm, as you will hear in some clips, um, took 40 years really in the making, but in the last couple years, within the last five, this farm has flourished with some new programs and some different management techniques. We need individuals that are going to work very hard to put quail back on the ground. Quail is kind of this really high management wildlife. It's the last tier of wildlife management, I think, that you can get to uh, because it, it really involves a lot of establishment ideas that are technical in nature, management that's technical in nature, and you need to know programs because we have a lot of opportunity for private lands and quail really are going to come back on private lands, folks. 90% of Tennessee is in private lands. If we don't have private lands folks helping on private lands, we're never going to get quail back, but it can occur. And this story that we're getting ready to share with you all is probably one of the best success stories I've seen in my career with the agency. And you're, you're how many years in with um, 25? About 20, yeah. 21 plus, and I've had a couple of these occur. And you know, this is a great story with this particular group of landowners because they're passionate about it. They're willing to do the hard passionate. stuff. Yes, they're willing to do the hard stuff and not just it's not just a buffer, it's management. It's taking out some of the trees to get back down to a grassland shrub habitat. That's what quail need. So some of these decisions aren't easy decisions. You gotta take out some trees to get the cover. And so if, you, if you're passionate about it and you're willing to work and it takes disturbance to get quail cover, then it can occur. You know, one thing we run into with a lot of people is everybody has the mentality of almost of a golf course landscape. They want it to be pretty, they want it to be neat and well kept, but quail don't like that. No, a lot of times in Tennessee we just see crop fields or fields mowed and forest edge. Mm -hmm. And that's not what quail need to survive. Yeah. Will Weddington. Uh, we're on our farm. It's been in our family now since the 1800s. And uh, this year I've hunted on this farm with my four boys. Um, so we just have a great time out here. We're very enthusiastic about quail hunting. I've been quail hunting with my father since I was a little bitty out here. And so it's a, it's just a, a pleasure to uh, not only hunt, but also uh, see the benefit of what you can do to improve the habitat and the uh, number of quail. And so we've kind of been up and down, but over the past 40 years, I've been involved with uh, working on habitat out here. We started out with a little quarter acre food plots years and years ago. Then we went to CRP and bigger fields. And then from there, we went to uh, buffer strips and, uh, and so from, from there, we went to uh, not only buffer strips, but also uh, trying to get some of the trees, keep the trees out of the buffer strips. And then we were advised to, to cut some of our big tall oak trees that we had on this farm to create even better habitat. I'm, uh, I guess, the fifth generation to quail hunt on this farm. And uh, yeah, I just grew up Kind of like I'm doing with my daughter now. Yeah, I was in the front of him on the saddle, you know, riding a horse. And and, uh, and this farm we're on now, it was uh, it was one that literally just always had some quail. You know, you'd always come out here and find a few cubbies, and uh, and we had a lot of fun doing that. And then all of a sudden, uh, just maybe three years ago, I guess three or four years ago, um, they got to where there was just literally no quail out here. And so we contacted uh, Mike Hansborough and said, you know what? 
what are some ideas, you know, what are some things we should do to improve the quail, you know? And, um, and so anyway, he told us, uh, you know, spray the arsenal on the saplings and all that and take out your big trees and work on your buffer strips. The buffer strips have been a huge uh, asset for this place for sure. Um, you know, without that, we wouldn't have any of the wildlife we do now. And, uh, you know, I know this is mainly about quail, obviously, but if you do like uh, deer, turkeys, rabbits, all of that, it, we wouldn't have any of that stuff without the buffer strips that we have here. And um, and so it's been a huge, huge asset for us. The thing that is very unique about this farm is uh, this is all wild birds out here. Uh, so, you know, we found eight different coveys and they're all wild birds. We None of these have been, uh, you know, planted here or any other, you know, means of, of getting birds on your property. So these are 100% wild. Um, I think my dad would probably shoot me if I brought a pen raised bird out here. So, um, so these are all wild. It's, it's a very cool, very cool thing we have going on here. Uh, got one other thing too to mention. Uh, it's really a win, win, win with the buffer strips because the farmer, uh, usually your bu our, our buffer strips, of course, they're along fence lines and fence lines where you got the most shade. So the farmer actually benefits because he's not planting something that wouldn't be as uh, productive as other parts of the farm that are more open. So it's a win for him, it's a win for the, for the uh, quail and the habitat because they've got somewhere to, to hide and to, uh, and to nest. And it's also a win for us in, uh, in, in the fact that uh, we do get CRP payments out here and just the enjoyment so, uh, that it brings our family and I know it can bring to others if others will join in. And that's what we're here for today is really to encourage others to join in with what we're doing with their farms and seeing that, uh, that it really is a win-win-win situation. And I want to say it's a great opportunity to be here today and talk about the Weddington Farm and what a nice family to work with and to uh, it's just enjoyable to work with folks that are so passionate about their family farm and about wildlife and specifically they really wanted quail. The quail was very important and also what was important was making money on the farm. I mean, we have really good buffer strips here and we have opportunities with USDA programs to take these marginal lands out of production and get some type of payment for them. Sometimes it's in the form of CRP, but we also have other great programs like Equip and CSP. And so there's lots of opportunity for landowners to participate in USDA programs. Wild birds from pen raised birds. These are very, very clean feet. With pen raised birds have got a lot of junk built up, but this is a wild bird. So, this is an adult bobwhite, the male, and I can tell it's an adult just by the outer primaries right here. And you always are looking to see if you're juveniles versus adults to see if you get some production, but. They got to a coat and a real nice wild bob white, something that's kind of rare in Tennessee. They don't have habitat. But they do have habitat. Hey folks, just to summarize on this successful quail management program uh, on private land, what they did here first was establish this really nice wide buffer. That buffer is going to provide a lot of nesting cover, a lot of brood cover, a lot of security cover that was step number one then you got to manage this buffer you got to be able to strip disc use prescribed fire be able to spray and take out some of the invasives that are going to occur those are the building blocks of a good foundation that's a first step but then you need to might have to do some hedgerow renovation lower that tree line get it back down to a shrub layer manage your block of woods is there really any beneficial trees in that block of woods or these small blocks that occur in farmland landscape? But then you also need to look at, does your farm really lie in a good landscape position to be able to do quail management? Some farms are surrounded by woods and those are not a really good, uh, high quality quail management unit. So you gotta understand, you're just not gonna do it everywhere. It's not gonna occur everywhere as far as a success story. But hopefully if you're in an open landscape, 
you've got some open fields, you can turn fields or buffers. Farming is good. We want the farming to occur out in the middle of the field, buffer along the edge, so farm the best and buffer the rest. And if you want more information on USDA Farm Bill programs, just come in and visit us at our USDA Service Center.